In order to discuss elimination using mechanistic terms, we're going to need two new elementary steps that both involve the formation of pi bonds by pi type overlap. In this webcast, I'm going to cover the so-called electrofuge dissociation and beta elimination steps, which generate double bonds from cations and anions respectively. Both of these elementary steps are going to become important as we begin to discuss the different kinds of mechanisms that elimination can proceed through. The first elementary step I'm going to discuss is the electrofuge dissociation, or DE step. And this step involves the cleavage of a carbon electrofuge bond with donation of the carbon electrofuge electrons into a new pi bond by a pi type overlap. And so what you should notice here is that the empty orbital into which the electrons are being donated is a p orbital on that carbocation. And the filled orbital, which is donating in, is the filled sigma orbital of the carbon electrofuge bond. And so this is an example, if we look down at our table, of a sigma to A type interaction. And the interaction is indeed pi type. And the way we can see that is by noting that this is an intramolecular process. And so the sigma bond and the p orbital are lined up parallel to one another. And there's no way that those two orbitals can orient themselves so that they're pointing head on at each other. So you'll notice that the products of this uh, process are the electrofuge as a cation. And so you can think of this as sort of a cationic leaving group, whereas leaving groups we saw in substitution often carried a negative charge. Leaving groups can also carry positive charge. And oftentimes, this E plus will be quite simply an H plus in examples that we look at. And then, of course, the more important organic product is a compound containing a double bond or an alkene. The second elementary step I'm going to discuss in this webcast is the beta elimination or E beta step. And this involves the formation of a pi bond from an anion with loss of an anionic leaving group, similar to what you're used to seeing for substitution reactions. So if we take a look at this example here, what you should note is that this is an example of an N to sigma star type interaction where the N orbital on the anionic carbon donates into the sigma star orbital of the carbon leaving group bond. You should also note that this is again a pi type interaction because it's an intramolecular process and the two orbitals are lined up parallel to one another in the transition state as the electron flow occurs. The products of the reaction are an anionic leaving group, and this is often the conjugate base of a strong acid such as Br- or I-, and an alkenic organic product containing a double bond. And so this is a very important process under basic conditions where a strong base can deprotonate a carbon to generate an anion, which can then kick off a leaving group to form a double bond. So if we come down here to our table of frontier orbital interactions, what we can see is that this is an example of an N to sigma star type interaction. Using the DE and E beta steps, along with older elementary steps that you've learned about already, we can construct three major mechanistic pathways for elimination reactions. And these differ in the timing of the deprotonation and leaving group dissociation events. So they can either be concerted or asynchronous, and if they're asynchronous, either leaving group dissociation can happen first, or deprotonation can happen first. If leaving group dissociation happens first, we have the top pathway, in which the leaving group is lost via a DN type step, leading to a carbocationic intermediate. This intermediate can then lose an electrofuge, typically H+, via a DE type step, to generate our alkene product. And this pathway is called the E1 pathway because the slow step dissociation of the leaving group from the starting material is unimolecular. If deprotonation happens first, common in the presence of strong base and very acidic hydrogens, we have the middle case. And in this middle case, what happens first, you'll notice, is a protonation step. And so the strong base deprotonates the substrate to generate this anionic intermediate shown here. This intermediate can generate an alkene via a beta elimination process, and that also generates an L-. This is called the E1CB pathway, and it's called that because the intermediate that's generated is an anion and is the conjugate base of the starting material. 
And so just like in the E1 case, the slow step is unimolecular, and because the conjugate base of the starting material is generated, it's called the E1CV pathway. If both events are synchronous, then we get the bottom pathway, and this is called the E2 pathway, because in the transition state for this mechanism, which is a one-step mechanism, two molecules are involved, the base and the substrate. And you'll notice that here that two elementary steps are actually going on in unison as well. The base is deprotonating the substrate in a PT type step, and a leaving group is leaving in a DN type step. And so this is an example of a concerted mechanism in which two elementary steps are happening at once. In the next series of webcasts, we'll take an in-depth look at these mechanistic pathways, when they occur, and the implications they have on stereo and regioselectivity.